Hi, my name is Mark Syme. I'm the minister here at the Northfield Church of Christ in Northfield, New Jersey. And I would like to welcome you all to the evening services of the Northfield Church for Sunday, February the 13th. Uh, we will be singing from Songs of Faith and Praise. Uh, I will give you the name of the song. If you don't have that, you, uh, if you have your device, you might be able to Google it and get the song and uh, sing along with us. Uh, there are a couple of songs that you can probably sing without the book. So uh, let's uh, all turn to number 1014. 1014. It's Jesus Loves Me. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Jesus loves me. He who died, heaven's gate to open wide. He will wash away my sin. Let his little children in. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Jesus, take this heart of mine. Make it pure and holy thine. On the cross you died for me. I will try to live for thee. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. And if you would turn to number 726. Seven twenty-six. Lord, listen to your children praying. Seven twenty-six. Lord, listen to your children praying. Lord, listen to your children praying. Lord, send your spirit in this place. Lord, listen to your children praying. Send us love, send us power, send us grace. Turn to number 314, the song before the Lord's Supper. Three. 14, Beneath the Cross of Jesus. We'll sing verses 1, 3, and 4. 1, 3, and 4. Beneath the cross of Jesus, I fain would take my stand. The shadow 
echo of a mighty rock within a weary land, a home within the wilderness, a rest upon the way. From the burning of the noontide heat And the burden of the day Upon that cross of Jesus Mine eye at times can see the Christ in rallying form of one who suffered there for me. And from my smitten heart with tears to wonders I confess. The wonders of His glorious love and my own worthlessness. I take the cross of shadow for my abiding place. I ask no other sunshine than the sunshine of His face. Content to let the world go by to instructed uh, to uh, meet and break bread together. That's what Acts, the 20th chapter, and the 7th verse tells us. It's a very important and integral part of our worship service, along with singing praises to the Lord and praying and, and breaking down the Word of God. One of the things that we do is that uh, we observe uh, the death of our wonderful Savior. Um, we uh, uh, look at this and we are so very, very grateful that it was always part of our God's plan that uh, this would happen, that his son would take human form and uh, he would live uh, on this earth and he would eventually die as the perfect sacrifice for our sins. So as we gather about the table, Let's think of the sacrifice that uh, Jesus made for us. Uh, let's pray for the bread. We're grateful, dear Heavenly Father, that uh, your son was willing to lay down his life for me, to give his body in my stead, in your stead. I just pray that we can personalize this and make it a, a, a part as we gather about the table between us and and you, dear God, that uh, the your son is the connection between us. We're so grateful that he made that one-time sacrifice. We pray that we would uh, be uh, capable of understanding how great that sacrifice was and be worthy of it. I pray this prayer in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. When we 
we think of the innocent blood that Jesus shed. We know that uh, he gave up that blood, uh, the life-giving fluid inside of his body, uh, that we might live. And we understand that the, the power that is in that blood, and it is the power to uh, forgive our sins. Let's pray for the cup. As we drink this fruit of the vine, help us to be reminded of uh, the blood that Jesus shed for us, that he was willing to, to do that willingly as, a, as that wonderful, perfect sacrifice. Bless us as we understand the magnitude of that sacrifice and the power that is in the blood. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. And as uh, a part of our uh, our Sunday worship, uh, we have this opportunity to uh, lay by in store and to give back to the Lord uh, that which he has blessed us with. Uh, help us uh, to understand the examples in the Bible of giving, the example of the widow and the two copper coins, the example of the Macedonians who asked that they could give. They asked not out of plenty, but they asked out of need of their own, that they could dig down deep so that they could help others. Bless us in our giving and help us to give from our hearts. Let's pray. We're so grateful to Heavenly Father that we are not only able to give, but that we are willing to give. Bless us in our giving. Help us as the Macedonians. Uh, not only did they give of their uh, of their monies, but it said they they gave themselves over to the Lord. They first gave of themselves, and let's remember to give of ourselves also. Bless us in our giving. We pray it in His most holy name. Amen. And if you would turn, turn your song books to number 578, we will glorify. 578, we will glorify. We will glorify the King of Kings. We will glorify the Lamb. We will glorify the Lord of Lords, who is the great I Am. Lord Jehovah reigns in majesty. We will bow before his throne. We will worship him in righteousness. We will worship him alone. He is Lord of heaven, Lord of earth. He is Lord of all who live. He is Lord above the universe. All praise to him we give. Hallelujah to the King of kings. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah to the Lord of Lords, who is the great I Am. Thank you for participating with us in song. Uh, I know that the Lord was glorified. I know I was uplifted. I always get pumped up when we get to sing praises to the Lord. And uh, we're just, uh, we're just in awe and wonder that we're able to do that. If you were uh, at services this morning, you heard uh, that the title of the lesson this evening would be When Meaning Makes a Thing Important. Hmm. If that sounds, uh, I don't know, it's not edgy, but if it sounds a bit provocative, so be it. Meaning. What do things mean 
in this world. Uh, sometimes, uh, sometimes I don't think we dig deep enough to find the meaning in uh, certain things. Uh, sometimes it's it's almost uh, uh, an afterthought. And so we turn to the book of Exodus in the fourth chapter, uh, verses five and six. And uh, we know that uh, the uh, children of Israel uh, were uh, crossing over the Jordan River. And uh, I want to make sure that I have that. Uh, let me make sure I have that scripture right. I'm not sure it's Exodus 4, 5, and 6, but... Uh, Maybe it's, maybe it's Joshua 4. Yeah, it's Joshua 4, 5, and 6. Pardon me. I, I just knew that didn't look right when I, uh, when I wrote it down. Joshua 4, verses 5 and 6. Now, uh, this is the second miraculous crossing 40 years before. Moses, uh, through the power of God, uh, parted the Red Sea so the children of Israel could uh, walk on dry land. And um, now it was time uh, to enter into the promised land. And in uh, uh, Joshua chapter 4, verses 5 through 6, we know that the Lord held up the waters of the Jordan River so that the children of Israel would have dry land to walk through. And they did walk through to the other side. And in verses 5 and 6, it says, So Joshua called the twelve men he had appointed from the sons of Israel, one man from each tribe. And Joshua said to them, Cross again to the ark of the Lord your God in the middle of the Jordan. And each of you take up a stone on his shoulder, according to the number of tribes of the sons of Israel. And get this, here's where the meaning comes in. Let this be a sign among you, so that when your children ask later, saying, what do these stones mean to you? And this is the remembrance. That's why I sang a couple of songs about, uh, about children. We, we have all kinds of symbols out there that mean something to us. And sometimes the, the size of the symbol is not commensurate with how much it means to you. I've been wearing this band on my finger for 52 years. It's not a very big band. It fits on my finger. It doesn't come off uh, very, very easily. But there's something about wearing that ring on this finger of my left hand. It signifies that I took a vow to a woman 52 years ago. The vow and the woman mean much more than the ring. But the ring is a symbol. It's a symbol of a, a pledge that was made. And we wear it, uh, I wear it, so that I will remember. Uh, I, this stayed on my hands, uh, hand, all during the years that I played sports, when I played basketball, when I played baseball, when I went out in the bay and I caught clams and I had gloves over my hands and they were in salt water, this ring stayed on my finger because it was a symbol. And there are all kinds of symbols like this. 
uh, in our lives. Um, maybe we have photographs around our house. I can probably look in different rooms in our house and see photographs. Photographs of our children. Photographs that our children at different ages. Now, uh, a lot of the pictures are photographs of our two grandchildren. And, and they mean something to us. There are other mementos. There are keepsakes that things that we buy for one another on special occasions. If we buy jewelry for someone, and we, when we wear it, we, we think of that piece of jewelry. I have a gold bracelet that I wear. I don't wear it, uh, very often, kind of when I dress up. Uh, my, uh, wife got it for me on my 50th birthday. So I've had that for 26 years now. <laughs> it's amazing how the time just flies by. And so all around us, are these mementos, um, an album of baby pictures. How often do you uh, get into those albums and look at maybe your wedding pictures or your baby pictures? Things that we might even look at is as irreplaceable. It's almost as if, if there were a fire in your house, uh, some of the things that we would want to try to get out, I'm not trying to get a uh, model in here, uh, some of those things that we would want to take out would be some of the mementos. Some of the things that might be worth more money, uh, we could probably replace, but it's hard to replace those mementos. Um, for a moment, let's take time to find out what things really mean. Now, when the 12 stones were left at the bank of the Jordan, where the people crossed, uh, they had a ceremony there, and that was a big deal. But you know what? This was the promised land. This was the land that was promised to the children of Israel. And so as generations would pass by, we, we are told here in the book of Joshua that the children would be taught what these rocks actually meant. You know, there may not, 40 or 50 years later, there may not have been many people who knew what that pile of rocks meant. And the further down the line you went, the fewer and fewer people. Now, the, those rocks, the symbol of God allowing the people to come into the promised land, if People did not teach their children and their children's children. They would forget. It wasn't the pile of rocks. It was what the rocks symbolized. It was a, it was a treasure. In Matthew chapter six, verse 21, Jesus said, where your tre treasure is, there will be your heart also. They wanted the people's heart to be there. God did a, a miracle here. He got us into this land. Furthermore, 40 years before that, he did another miracle by parting the Red Sea. And the, ch and the, the parents would tell the children and the children's children, we ate bread that came out of heaven. These were meaningful things. And those who took the time to find out would be rewarded by a bit of knowledge that was not only interesting, but was beneficial. 
And you know, there are uh, lots of interesting songs out there about things that we pass down to our children. The singing group out of the 60s and 70s, Crosby, Stills, and Nash, and then Neil Young added on to that, sang a song entitled, Teach Your Children Well. And one of the lines was, teach your children what you believe in. Make a world that we can live in. We, we teach our children about the wonderful things in life. We teach them lest they forget. You know, uh, uh, my three grown children come to our home. Now, this is the home, only home that for the first 18 or 19 years of their life that they knew. It's the same house. It's, it's still in the same place in Pomona, New Jersey on Father Kai's Drive. Now we've added to it, but you know, the floors and the steps are, are all the same. And so when they, when they walk into the house, they're, I'm sure they're flooded with a memory of things that, that went on before. Uh, maybe not all the memories are great memories, but, but they are because this is where they had kind of their, their roots. These days, I think most of us stay so busy with the trivia of life. Sometimes we rarely stop and ask the meaning of the very, very important things about us. And we're losers, I believe, when we fail to ask sometimes, what does that actually mean? Take time to appreciate what things mean. This book, this Bible, means something. We read things from it to get guidance. In our Wednesday night Zoom class here at the Northfield Church of Christ, we have just embarked on the study of the book of Romans, a wonderful, wonderful, deep book. And as we read it, we, we remember though it was written close to 2000 years ago that the words in that book come alive and take meaning for us. And so as we, as we go through the chapters and the verses, we often ask ourselves, what does that mean? When we ask that, we are asking, how is that significant in our lives? What is it about our own Bible and our attachment to our Bible that uh, keeps us clinging to it. We need to take precautions so that we as human beings won't become so jaded that the meaningful things in life will become stale or will become dull. Worship services on the Lord's day ought to be meaningful to us. The, the things that we do in our worship service ought to be meaningful to us. And we ought to teach our children that these are the things that have meaning in your life. Teach our children what things mean. We, we do a disservice to our children if they grow to maturity without having been taught the truly important things of life, the meanings that have been handed down. So it's a, it's a privilege and a responsibility to each generation to see that the young people have seen who have gone before them and, 
and find those people meaningful. You know, my my children were were fortunate enough to have uh, my their grandparents, at least three of them, around until they were uh, all in their in their thirties, and so they saw a bit of the the history and the genetics of where they came from. Few things are inherently valuable, but you know what? It's what they mean that makes it important to us. And so meanings are important. And, and sometimes I think that we would be better off if we took some time to examine the the meaning a great the great psychoanalyst Carl Jung said the least of things with a meaning is worth more in life than the greatest of things without it meaning the meaning of the important things in life and meaning is important. When we think of the cross, it's not the shape of the cross that's important. It's, it's the meaning behind it that Jesus Christ, our Savior, hung upon that cross. When we think that three days after he died, that the tomb could not hold him and he resurrected from the dead. That has meaning to us. We teach it. It becomes an ingrained part of our life. When we understand that this life is a temporal one, and that we are all striving to live in eternity with the Lord. That's meaningful. It is something that we ought to think about each and every day. It is, it is the, I guess the goal that ought to drive our lives so that we would one day live with our Lord forever. And so just for a moment this evening, uh, just give thought to what Joshua did there. The, the rocks that were put there, there were 12 of them. But moreover, what it meant. And with that, to understand when meaning makes a thing important. The meaning behind obedience is important. In the Great Commission, Jesus said, go out into all the world, teaching the things that I have taught you to all nations, baptizing to them into the name of the Father. This is what we're supposed to do, and it has meaning. Part of our lives are wrapped around that meaning because it is that that is the central part of our life that gets us to God through Jesus Christ, through the obedience of what we have done. When we confess Jesus as the Son of God, when we repent of our former ways and are baptized for the remission of our sins, the gift of the Holy Spirit is bestowed upon us. And this has meaning, and this meaning is important. If you haven't taken that step, we offer that to you this evening. Get in touch with one of us. We will help you in any way that we can to get you in to Jesus Christ. Let's all pray together. Our Heavenly Father, be with us this evening. Help us to understand the, the greatness of uh, your church. Help us to understand uh, the greatness of your word. Help us to understand the greatness of your son 
at what he did for each of us. Bless us, dear Heavenly Father, so that these things will truly have meaning in our life. And that meaning will make those things important so that we'll live our lives the way we should. Be with us. Help us to lift one another up and encourage one another. Help us to comfort one another. Help us to stay in your word. Bless us through the night. Help us to look forward to the time that we can get together again. Uh, be with us. Bless us. We pray this in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. Please be safe, and may God bless you all. There is the only Azure Blue, a God concealed from human sight. He did his eyes with heavenly hue, and framed the worlds with his great might. There is a God, he is alive. Oh,